Hi, today we're going to talk about ergonomics and anthropometry. The main goal of ergonomics is to improve the quality of life at work. Ergonomics uh, search, uh, seeks to make the environment adapt to the worker and not otherwise. And wants to improve productivity, security, health, and wellness. I'm using these uh, Homer Simpson uh, images to represent what ergonomics is and what it's not. For example, we want to adapt the environment to the worker, but not as much that the worker is not doing its work. We want to define the better positions of the body so you can perform any activity such as lifting uh, a charge or a, or a box. We want you to be comfortable with uh, in relation to your workstation, the height of the table, the height of the uh, chair, the distance between you and, and your, and your uh, machines or your equipment such as your computer. Ergonomics, it's a multidisciplinary system where many disciplines interact in order to get the goal done. In, in ergonomics, the goal is to improve your quality of life at work, as we already said. Ergonomics has three main domains, from the physical ergonomics, the cognitive ergonomics, and the organizational ergonomics. In physical ergonomics, we focus on human characteristics, anatomical, anthropometric, physiological, and biometrical aspects. In cognitive ergonomics, we deal with mental processes such as perception, memory, reasoning, and motor responses. Organizational ergonomics is more interested in the optimization of the socio-technical system, such as uh, human activity systems, a, a group of process that want to accomplish a specific goal, such as production or uh, even in uh, service stations which includes their organizational structure, rules, policies, and processes. In a, in, a, in, in a general manner, ergonomics works with the organization in terms of efficiency, works with the design, the comfort and satisfaction of the worker, but also takes into account prevention in health and security. Here is an example of a, of a construction task where a worker needs to uh, be sure that the union between uh, two, two different uh, products is well done. So we use some equipment so you don't have to use your hands because this position is very uncomfortable and doesn't allow you to uh, not get uh, any injuries. So when you modify your position and you're not uh, bended, you are standing up and you have enough extension on your equipment. So the equipment can work with the union of those two uh, products. You can have a better union of it and it's, it's a, a secure union and you don't get injured, you, your body doesn't, doesn't uh, get any, any damage. Therefore, we can say that ergonomics is the improved task performance in terms of efficiency, fewer media, faster, fewer error, safer, healthier, and with no or very little fatigue. But there is also new ergonomics in today's world, such as process control, simulation, virtual environments, transport, 
musculoskeletal disorder, aging, health care, organizational design and management, affective design, sustainable development, and information systems. This is where ergonomics is going to right now. Now we're going to talk about anthropometry. Anthropometry, it's the science that understands the measurements of the measurements of the human body. Anthropometric data for a population is considered to follow a normal distribution. It is customary to specify anthropometric data in terms of statistical numbers called percentiles. The percentiles indicate the amount of population that has the dimension of the body up to a certain size. This is why we say that it follows a normal distribution. All, all people distribute around uh, an average, a mean, with a normal uh, behavior. Intuitively, we can say that percentile, it's a value such that it exceeds a certain percentage of the members of the population. It is generally designed for 90% of the population. When we talk about anthropometry, measuring is an important topic. We measure instruments, we need instruments so we can measure, such as the anthropometer, the caliper, the thickness pass, the measuring tapes, and we also measure conditions. We need the, the, the human body uh, with minimal clothing, even if, if it's possible uh, to be naked, uh, flat bearing surfaces. Yeah, so, so uh, there are no, no, no variations. And, and body symmetry uh, that you assume uh, uh, are a rect position. Here are examples of these, these measurements, the, the measurements that are important for any task and the instruments that you are observing. There is also anthropometric data. When this data is used, it is very important to know the origin and the composition of the sample of the population from which they were obtained. We need uh, those specifications in the data so we can uh, work with it. This is designed for 90% of the male population in the USA. It's compatible with 90% of German population, 80% of French population, 65% of the Italians, 45% of the Japanese, 20% of Thais and 10% of Vietnamese. So this is the, the equivalent. If you are working with data that comes from the USA or, or Germany, you don't have any trouble. But if you are using data of the USA to design for Vietnamese, you are going to have uh, a lot of difference and you're not going to be able to make the work adapt to the worker. The, work, the worker will be adapting to it. This is an, an example for in North America, the height of a woman from the floor to the, the lower part of the neck in, in average, it's uh, 124.5 centimeters. In Europe, kind of the same, but look at Asia, it decreases some 12 centimeters. And in Latin America, the difference is it's smaller, but there is still a difference. The same uh, happens with men. This is some uh, measurements that we need when the work that the worker is doing, the task that the worker is doing, it's, uh, it, he needs or she needs to be standing up. Of course, we need uh, the stature, the eye high, the shoulder high, in the elbow high. When you are seated, we need different types of measurements, such as the seated high, number seven, from the uh, 
sitting position to the topper uh, of uh, the top height of your of your head, the eye high, the shoulder high, but all in relation with uh, the the seated position, the seat. There are three anthropometric design principles. We can design for the average, design for extremes, and adjustable interval design. For example, when we design for the average, we may end up without uh, adequately adjusting to anyone, since the average is very inefficient to characterize existing cases. The average person in most uh, uh, most of the time is not a reference. It's uh, the average person maybe doesn't exist because when when we have um, many variation between the aspect that we are uh, analyzing to the design, for example, the height, the weight, the 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 the, 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 the dimensions of your body, maybe the average is not the best representation that we must use for the design. When we talk about designing for extremes, you have to analyze two uh, important factors. As you are going to design for the 90%, 95% of the distribution of the, of the people that you are analyzing, the, the workstation for, and you're going to leave 5%, or you are going to analyze for the 5% and you're going to leave 95%. So when, when we, should we use 5% or 95%? We use 5% when we are designing for the little people. If the little people can perform the activity, the tall people can perform it too. That's an example of how to design for extremes. Another design comes in interior design. In interior designs, if you design for the big person, every, every, everybody is going to be into the uh, intervals and can perform and will be able to perform the activity. For example, if you are designing the high of a door, if you design for the five for the five percent for the little people, then the, the tall people uh, will have to adapt to the, the environment. If in in that case you design for the little people, the tall one, uh, the, the the if you design excuse me for the tall people, then you are considering also the little people too. Here's a a, a nice question. Are you going to design for the little people or for the big people right here? We just need to observe this, this image right here. And, and we are seeing that this person is forcing his position to get to where he's going to get this product right here. So this is a, 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 an example of a bad design. It considered uh, only the 5% that were taller here and didn't consider it the, 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 the smallest persons, or maybe it was designed uh, differently. There is also the adjustable interval design. The adjustable interval design provided its technically and economical feasibility, and it is preferable. It is more expensive, but if you can adjust, you can adapt. So you have the, the ability of having the environment adapt to you and not otherwise. When we talk about anthropometric design, we need to establish the amount of people that will be designing to, if it's just a person or a group, then in either case, we are going to have some measurement and analysis. In the case of a group, we have to analyze if there is data already. If it, there's data already, you have to analyze it. If not, you have to, to gather uh, the, the data and then analyze it and design. 
there are seven important steps into using anthropometrical data. First, you must identify important dimensions. So, uh, for example, your hip, your wealth uh, for a seat. You must identify the user population. Example, children, Mexican population, etc. You must determine the principles to use. You must select the accommodation ranks. If it's going to be a percentile of 90%, 95 or more. You must search for res relevant data, make modification, and you must make some critical dimension test with models or virtual models. In terms of job requirements, you must also be uh, mindful of visuals, such as information processing or task control, range distance for controls or movement, a working posture, if it's sitting, if it's standing, the body housing, accessibility, dimensions for an operation or several operators, the comfort in its posture, in the load or handling of material and physical environment in general. Later we'll be, see, we'll be seeing what this physical environment in general means. There are some types of anthropometry, the structure, structural or static anthropometry, that it's the dimensions of the human being at rest and the functional or dynamic anthropometry that composite measurements of human being in motion. Here's examples of dynamic anthropometry where you need to move your body, uh, parts of your body or your whole body. There are some uh, uh, consideration of uh, the angles of, of your movement, so it is comfortable. For example, those who are out of extreme flexion or extension and in the proximity of a neutral position, they do not deform the joint. There is some balance between the traction of the flexor and extensor muscles and long lasting postures maintenance. Here are some intervals of the different angles where your head should be moving or rotating from a neutral position to 55 uh, uh, degrees, either left or right, having an optimal of movement of your head of only 10 degrees to the right or to the left. In extension, we are considering the a neutral position and to the front, you can move up to 40, 40 degrees and to the back up to 30, 30 degrees. If you have more, for example, if you move your, your neck uh, back more than 30 degrees, you can feel uh, dizzy. In the inclination of your head, you can also move it from 40 degrees, either left or right, but having an optimal of 10 degrees. There is also some uh, angle variations for the wrist, for the arm and the forearm. And when you are working on a, on a panel, you should be able to reach everything around you with your extended arm. And this is what I wanted to show you in this uh, video. In the, in the next video, we are going to talk about uh, ergonomics controls and environment design. So I hope you find this uh, video uh, useful and see you, see you in, in the next uh, occasion.